Today I'm gonna do my AM PM routine. My skin is of course different than your skin. So I just wanted to lay out what I do to kind of you know keep my barrier intact. This is also massively targeted at hyperpigmentation. What you see on camera, what you see over your phone or on your computer is a very, very nice version of my skin because I'm sitting in front of a window and it just, it's more flattering than maybe in real life. You might see a little bit more of my hyperpigmentation, certainly more of my texture, etc. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go through all of the steps, both AM and PM, and maybe you'll get some nuggets of either inspiration or help for your skin as well. Now, if you're new here, my name is Penny. I'm a master esthetician and I just love all things skin. I love sharing knowledge about skin. I love learning about skin. I love talking to people who know more about skin than I do. I love all of it. Now, if you are interested in skincare, if you're interested in devices, protocols, ingredient breakdowns, any of that stuff, I hope you'll subscribe before you go and join the fam. Let's get into it. So let's go through the AM routine first. Now, Relatively new to my routine is Systamine. Now I did do an affordable alternatives video recently and I shared that I started to use the Systamine products and I gave an affordable alternative. Since I did that video, I actually had a subscriber recommend to me another brand that is also an affordable alternative to Sispera or to the Sente Systamine product. It will be listed in the description box if you wanna check it out. It is Urban Skin RX, I believe it is. Anyway, they have a 5% Systamine product on the market as well, under $50. I've already ordered it and I'm excited to try it out and review it for you. But for now, I'm gonna get through the ones that I've already purchased. This is Sispera. I use any of the three <laughs> that I have every single morning when I wake up. It is the first thing that I do. I might get a cup of coffee first, but I definitely, I don't wash my face. I don't do anything like that. I put on a decent amount of the Systamine uh, product and I set my stopwatch on my phone so that um, I will know, well, I keep checking it. So I kind of have an idea when 15 minutes goes by. And then I go in and I rinse and wash it off. Now, the reason why I'm using this every single day is in that way is because this is a pigment inhibitor. Now, a cystamine is actually an antioxidant, but it's found to also inhibit melanin and it helps in kind of the production and overproduction of melanin. So I'm digging into cystamine and its method of action and all of that kind of stuff. It's relatively novel. I mean, it's been out for a couple years, but it's relatively novel compared to things like hydroquinone or even tranexamic acid and arbutin and things like that. So I will list the ones that I'm using, but I will definitely also list the affordable alternatives because they are all 5% cystamine and they all are the exact same directions that 15 minutes a day on dry skin. That's really, really important. If you wash your your face. This is why I don't do it at night. If you wash your face, you have to wait an hour before you put it on. And that's kind of to avoid irritation. And frankly, they say that you can put it on right over makeup, like at night. And that just doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. It's far, far too expensive, in my opinion, to put this over makeup just to avoid washing my face and waiting an hour. So that's why I do it first thing in the morning. So that's the number one thing that I do in the morning. Now, recently I pulled back out an old favorite and this this is essentially my essence step. Now, this is not a necessary step in anyone's routine. I just really like this. I feel like it is, I don't know, I just feel like it really hydrates my skin, gives my skin kind of this plumpness without any weight at all. And that is my Sukiyaka Suhada. I have been talking about this essence for years and years and years and years. I love this so much that when I was in clinic, I would buy it and sell it literally like for $20, which if you go into, if you go into a doctor's office, you usually don't find big essences for 20 bucks. But I was like, I don't care. I want everybody to experience this. It's such a good product. And it's really just like water. So it's not like, I mean, it's not magical. It's just really nice. It It's based off of urea. Now, 
Urea is a humectant. In low percentages, urea is a humectant. So it draws water to it, helps to hydrate the tissue, helps to you know plump up the tissue, things like that. Urea is also a very small molecule. So it's, it's able to kind of get in and hydrate the skin a little bit deeper and a little bit better. And it's shown to last a little bit longer than other humectants. So I love that this has urea as its kind of humectant uh, ingredient. So I put some of this in the palm of my hand and I basically go like this and I just pat it all over my face, my neck. I get it on the back of my hands. I'm generous with it because it's not expensive and it takes me a long time to go through one of these. I really, really, really love this. Okay. So that's my essence step. Next is my serum step. Now, this is something that I kind of um, go back and forth. I do um, one of a couple of serums. It, the serum step to me is the opportunity to target whatever you're going after. And for me, that is pigment. And that is also, I want to have some antioxidant protection. And then of course, it's hydration, it's ceramides, it's kind of feeding the skin. That's kind of the serum step to me in the morning. So the one that I'm using all the time right now is the Dermatology Needle Serum. I used this for a long time, then I didn't, probably because I was trying a gazillion other things. I went back to it and I gotta say, my goodness, I forgot how much I like this. And I revisited the ingredient deck and now it's it's uh, clear to me why. It's got, uh, like I said, it's got ceramides. It has peptides in there. It has so many different humectants. It is really, really good for your barrier function. And I mean, so many peptides in there. It's absolutely an anti-aging kind of targeted serum for fine lines, wrinkles, etc. It also has some copper peptides in there. Now they're way down on the list, but because they're in there, I'm kind of careful with what I pair this with. Primarily, um, I don't want to pair it with vitamin C. Now, in the past, I've been told that it's okay that you can pair this with vitamin C, but my understanding is if your vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid, so if it's the normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill L-ascorbic acid, the active form of vitamin C, if that is in your routine in the morning, which it's in a lot of people's routines, I would not pair a copper peptide with it because the copper can, the copper peptide can actually, or the copper can oxidize the vitamin C, rendering it less effective. And that's kind of silly. We don't want to do that. Now I've taken it one step further and I don't usually pair this with antioxidants in general. Now there's no reason for that. I just decided I'm not going to waste my antioxidants on the off chance that any of this can oxidize any of that. So on some days I'm using this, I just alternate, kind of depends on how my skin feels. I use needle serum. And then on other days, I'm out of vitamin C. I'm out, it's gone. I haven't ordered a new one. So I'm not using vitamin C right now, which is kind of crazy. I will use astaxanthin. Now astaxanthin is an interesting ingredient. It is an antioxidant and it is incredibly potent. In fact, it is said to be like 600 times more potent than vitamin C. You've probably heard that. That's been spoken on the internet quite a bit. That's like a buzzy thing to say about it. Is it better than vitamin C and all of that stuff? I don't know that it's better than vitamin C. It's it's probably a really good complement to vitamin C. But I love this one by Skin Iceland. I have a few others that I might pull for, but that is how I alternate my serum steps. I either use astaxanthin right now, or I am using the dermatology. Now astaxanthin is also going to help with pigment. It is a pigment inhibitor. It is a brightener. It's going to help with reactive oxygen species, which are things that are created from oxidative stress. So the environment, pollution, which is a huge thing right now, the sun, of course, all of those things cause oxidative stress on our cells and reactive oxygen species are um, per, uh, emitted and an antioxidant can help kind of fend them off, neutralize them and keep your cells a little bit healthier and also help to brighten your skin. So that is the next step. I alternate serums. Now that would be the step where I would say to you, what's your main gripe? 
What is your main thing? Are you mostly dry? Well, this would be when I would say, well, you want a hydrating serum. You know, maybe you want to choose a straight up humectant serum. Maybe you want to grab a beta glucan or a hyaluronic acid serum. That's your opportunity to address something that's bothering you. And to me, that's where the serum step comes in. It's a potent way to really address an issue. The next step for me is going to be a moisturizer. And for right now, it is my one skin. The key to this one for me right now is I just use one single pump. If I use too many pumps of this, I've got too much going on and I can feel kind of like heavy and not because of this, just because of the combination of all of it. And I don't just don't need to use more than that. So I use that one pump on my face and then I usually do go back and I use one pump on my neck and the back of my hands. So I ultimately do use two pumps, but only one on my face and kind of my jawline and then one more. And that way I feel like I get enough coverage and I spread the OS1 peptide, you know, all over the places that matter the most to me. So that's my moisturizer. I am going to list some um, alternatives in the description box because I know that some people don't use one skin and um, don't want to use one skin. And I do have some alternatives that you might want to use in your moisturizer step that have peptides and that are going to not just moisturize your skin, but they may also do um, additional things with peptides for you. So I will list those in the description box. Then last thing is my SPF step. So for me right now, I I have been using the same old usual suspects. I am still like a broken record using my Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer. Now this one works really, really well for me because I have dry skin. I do know that some people, if you have oily skin, you may prefer a more matte sunscreen. The important thing isn't the specific sunscreen, it's that you wear a sunscreen. That's what's really, really important in this step. That is so important for pigment. So if you're going to do steps to take care of pigment, you really wanna protect your skin. So a good SPF is important. Now I wanna mention one other thing. I sometimes am using my droplet in the morning with a collagen capsule, but I'm gonna be real with you guys right now, I forget. I forget to do this. Um, I say I remember to do a collagen capsule probably three times a week. And what happens is now that I'm doing the Suspera, it's like I'm all thrown off as far as what I used to do, how I used to do it first, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I still love this and I, I still love it and I still love that collagen capsule. I just don't always remember, but it is still part of my routine. Okay, PM is oddly, a lot more simple. Now at night, what I do is I start, I wash my face, of course, and right now I've been doing a double cleanse. I just grab a cleansing balm. I, I like several. I love the original Elemis. Um, I really do love some from, um, gosh, I love the Clean It Zero, the Vanilla Co. I love Hymish. I There's several that I really like. I really do like the Dermatology uh, Pre-Cleanse Oil. Basically, I just use an oil or a balm to loosen up makeup and kind of get everything moved around so that then I can go back and wash my face. And I just use the One Skin Prep cleanser again. Now the next step for me is Revive. Now this is Growth Factor Serum. I've been using this forever. This is the one that I'm using right now and it is a double chamber. Let's see if you can tell. Can you see that there are two things going on? There's this chamber and then there's this chamber, okay? So this is now the old packaging. I'm still finishing this one up, but I already ordered the new packaging because I didn't, this was, this is it. Like I'm gonna run out of this. I have a little bit of time left, but I did not want to miss out because sometimes they do run low on stock and sometimes you have to wait. So I thought I'm gonna be proactive and I ordered this one. And what they've done is they have put it into new packaging where it's a single pump now, single chamber. So the um, ingredients are effectively mixed together. So that is really nice. I did try this because I wanted to test the pump and it locks. It's like, um, it locks, which I really appreciate that for traveling and, and that kind of thing. The pump worked great. And I feel like it dispenses just the right amount of product. It's not too much because you really don't need too much. 
I am totally guilty of like over pumping and wasting. You just really don't need, especially when you're doing layers, you just don't need to use that much. Now, this is a growth factor serum and basically it's a dupe for like TNS. It has a cocktail of growth factors in there and then it also has a ton of other great ingredients and one of the ingredients or maybe two is a pigment inhibitor, which I absolutely love about this because I'm getting some pigment inhibiting ingredients which again, what that's going to do is that's going to help to inhibit or um, block the production of melanin, the overproduction of melanin. That's going to help my um, healthy cells to come forward as we go through our skin cycle and not be overpigmented. So they'll look more clear and my skin will look less like it has sunspots, etc. So I love this. I have loved this serum for a long, long time. I've used it for a long time. Anytime I run out and I can't get my hands on it, I miss it. It is definitely a staple in my skincare routine and it has been for a long time. Okay, so the next thing that I do is I use my Youth Recovery. This is DNA Repair Enzymes. If you do not know what DNA Repair Enzymes are, they're gonna help with old sun damage, etc. I've done several videos on them. I did an interview, I always say this, I did an interview with Dr. Dan Uroche, who is kind of like the authority on DNA repair. I'm gonna link that in the description box. You should watch it. It is, he is so articulate and wonderful and he can explain it a million times better than me, but I love to use this at night. It definitely is just part of my um, attack on hyperpigmentation and sun damage and old damage and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so after that is a pigment inhibitor because like I have said before, if you have hyperpigmentation, if you have melasma, one of the things that you want to do is you want to be pigment inhibiting AM and PM. Now, I have some in my review. I'm using the DNA repair, all of these things, but I like to get a dedicated pigment inhibitor on board. Now, for me right now, it's the Touch Bright and Clear, this was an old favorite that I pulled back out recently when I'm um, kind of researching my affordable alternatives video and I was reminded how much I absolutely love it. Now this is the old packaging. I'm just like, I have less than a third left. So I'm like, I'm just gonna finish this off before I bought the new packaging. But before I start using that, I'm just gonna finish this and it's kind of a goal of mine to finish it. So it will keep me diligent with it. But this is what I use next. Now this is kind of a gel and this is kind of a gel and I just layer it on. Now at night, I really don't care how many layers of whatever I have on, um, but this is what comes next. Now, on probably three nights a week, I am using a retinol. And when that happens, what I'm using right now is still my GFS from Photozyme. I love this, it has DNA repair enzymes in there and then it has an encapsulated retinol. I, I just love it, it's a really, really good product. What I will do is I just swap these two. So I won't use my youth recovery. I will just use the GFS. And that kind of saves me from the youth recovery, you know, going through this too, too fast because I can go through this because I love it. It's so lightweight and beautiful that again, sometimes I'm like pump happy and I use a ton of it. Now, so I will swap out and use this one probably three days a week ish. Kind of depends on my skin. But what this is going to do for me is it is a retinol. Now, a retinol or a retinoid. Um, it's going to be a pigment inhibitor in its own right. It is also going to help to promote the production of healthy cells to move forward from, um, you know, in the beginning from the base so that they can move forward and be free of excess pigment, behave in a healthy manner, and just overall act like they were, you know, younger cells. A retinoid is one of those things that if you are moving in on 40, if you're certainly over 40 years old, I really highly suggest that you get a retinoid on board. The main thing that you gotta do is you have to start slow and you have to acclimate. And so it's really, really important that you choose a percentage that isn't too crazy and that you space it out and that you don't use too much. So your frequency, the amount that you use and the percentage that you use all of those things will play into your long game. The only way that you're gonna get results from a retinoid is by consistency and using it for a long time. So you don't wanna blow it out of the water in the beginning and quit because that's what happens to a lot of people. Okay, so that is the retinoid that I use. 
That's it. That is my PM routine. Now, I could throw a moisturizer in, and sometimes I do. If my skin is feeling dry, then I will throw a moisturizer in. Sometimes that is my dermatology um, peptide moisturizer, which I absolutely love. Sometimes it is my dermatology soothe and recovery. Occasionally, I will throw in an alpha hydroxy acid. So that's usually in the form of a toner. I don't have a specific time that I do that. I just will feel like I need to exfoliate maybe once a week. And I will use Biologique Recherche uh, P50, 1970. I might use Summer Fridays has an exfoliator that I really, really like. I just saw that Youth to the People came out with a reformulated um, kombucha, their exfoliator. I'm gonna pick that one up. So like once a week, I'll throw that in. And when I do that, I usually will do it and then just leave my skin alone for hours and then I might just do my evening routine later or something like that. The other thing that I do sometimes is sometimes, maybe once a week, I just moisturize my skin at night and I don't do anything else. I just throw on a bunch of moisturizer. Maybe I put on some hydrating essences. I have a lot of skincare here, and all I do is feed, nourish, and moisturize my skin. I try to do that like once a week, just because I feel like sometimes your skin just needs a break from all the actives, and healthy barrier is one of the most important things because if our barrier is impaired, then we won't have kind of all of the right stuff going on inside to make the changes that we want. Okay, I wanna reiterate that I'm gonna put all of this in the description box. I'm going to list the products that I mentioned, but I'm gonna list them as a category. I'm gonna to try to find affordable alternatives for everything that I can. And I'm gonna kind of, I want to list it as a category so maybe in your collection, if you have something that fits there, you wanna mimic this protocol, you can just pull from your own stash and go along with me in this protocol. Now, of course, I didn't take into account any of the devices or any of that kind of stuff that I do. If you would like a protocol for that, I can try and do that. I will tell you, it's relatively haphazard these days. It is one of those things where I do devices all the time, but um, there's no schedule. <laughs> It's when they fit in to life. And I try to do it as lots of times a week, but it's not on any specific schedule, if that makes sense. But if you're interested in knowing what I'm doing with devices, I'm happy to share. I am getting ready to microneedle and go into fall with microneedling, so that's coming soon too. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a really wonderful week and say hi in the comments and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.